horizontal movement. So we are talking about either just moving the original graph this way or doing all the other things and then this as well. All right. This is where writing it in your calculator comes in. You're going to use your calculator to make sure you're right. Okay, so sketching the graph is really important because then you know that the picture represents the situation. So it comes here. Now, just like any C's in, the, in any plus solving in the world with X, it works in opposition to what you think. So you know how you've gone X plus 2 equals 4. What do you do? You subtract 2, right? When we deal with D, D is over here. It's actually in relationship to Y, the Y axis. So it actually works the opposite. But because we write it on this side, when it says plus 1, it means go up. When we have the X parts, when it says plus 2, it doesn't mean go forward, it means go backwards. All right, so you learnt this a little bit last year with your graphs, and it's true for this. So that means plus C, move forward, move backwards to wherever C happens to be. So in easy form, we're now going to change from Y equals sine X plus 2. That 2 is part of the angle, therefore it's in radians. We're now growing up. We're not going to write the radians anymore. We're going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a bit. That's where the graph goes to, right? 1 period, 6.28. So it goes to there. We're moving the graph that way too. So it would normally start here. But now it's going to start here. So when you're drawing it, you need to sort of slice off the 3.14s from there. So that's 2. 1.14 will be 3.14 or pi. 4.28 will be 2 pi. So that's our graph. Up to 1, down to negative 1, and it's a sine graph. So halfway in between, it's not going to actually peak there, it's going to peak here. All right, very much a sketch, trying to hit 6.28 and 3.14 as our two halves of our graph. All right, so if we are drawing y equals negative 2 cosine x minus pi, let's do an empty one, we're going up and down from 2, cosine normally starts it up here, it's going to start down here. We're moving at minus pi, which means we're starting the graph at pi. Okay, we've normally start there. We're now starting here. We need to finish our graph at 2 pi. So we're going to go up to here and up to here. Well, what does that look like? the same graph as right <laughs> yes so we moved it which meant that it actually stopped from being upside down to being up the right way because the graph repeats every pi every two pi so a half a pi was the opposite pattern. All right, so there are many ways we could write equations. What we have to do when we're writing the equations is make sure that we run through the four things. So I'm going to draw one tricky one. Um, y equals a half sine two x minus 
class one. Whew. There you go. Everything's there. We've got A, B, C, and D. It's about as bad as you could get it. Right? You are going to be finding that equation probably, although you might get one equation and have to find another one. So you might just have to draw this. But the likelihood is you'll have to find this based on all the information you're given. So what does this look like? Think about what you're drawing first. I'm moving it up one. It's half a graph, so I don't really actually need anything under the x-axis. Twice as many in the space as one, and it's moving forward 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to go with six being about here, and a half, we're going to go up to two. Right, so original graph. Goes just past, remember? So here's the original sign graph. Right. That was an easy one. Half of that. Again. Not too bad. We're going to go to half of that. Right, good. Now we've got the half up one. All right, so you take it up to here and go halfway. Right, one at a time. Twice as many. Okay, we've got twice as many. Now the hard part. Take that and move it. We need to move it this way, one and a half. One and a half is here. It's going to start here. So every point is going to move on one and a half. And so we need to go one and a half is close to half pi. Pi by 2 is 1. 1. 1.07, 1. 1.57, 1. so it's really close to half to what we've moved it. So it's just more than, so we're going to be starting just below over here. So starting here, ending there, it's only a sketch. Right, doesn't have to be accurate. And then I'm going to grab my graphics calculator and check if I'm even close and compare it to my picture. Okay, why I'm doing the sketch is to make sure that what I'm putting in the graphics calculator is right. Now here comes the shopping part. Bracket, 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 bracket. If you forget any of those brackets, you'll get something like a straight line or something weird. It will not be drawing this graph. You have to put these brackets in. And it helps when you're doing the um, the x-axis cutoffs that you use normal numbers now. So use threes or one and a halves or something as your steps along the way. Okay, so how do we find the equation if that's the picture? Right. So finding the equation is actually quite tricky. It's all quite tricky. We're big year 13 now. We're allowed big tricky stuff. Right. Let's start some random. I don't know. That looks good. Right, we're going to go up to one and down to five. I'm going to say this is six. <laughs> All right. Who knows what this equation is going to be? Come for a ride with me. Not promising I'll do it right. Let's start at the beginning, though. A is really easy to find. Maximum to negative A. Max minus min over two. So one plus 5 over 2 equals 3. Tick. One mark. B. How many in the space of 1? Good question. Well, the period here is going to say let's pretend that keeps going upwards here and that is 14. We're just pretending here. So the period is from that up to that up 14. 
right? 14 minus 6. So 14 minus 6 equals 8, usually on a good day. So the frequency is equal to 2 pi over 8, which makes it pi over 4. All right? Next. D. Let's do D next because it's easy. D equals maximum minus A. So that is 1 minus 3 equals a negative 2, which is quite nice because that tells me that wherever this line here is, is at negative 2. The graph goes up and down from there. All right. And now, where does the graph start? Well, first decision is, do I pick cosine or do I pick sine? Most of the time you'll be allowed to pick, but there are some assessments where it says write two equations for it, meaning they want you to write the cosine and the sine. They're not very much different. We talked about this at the beginning. There's only actually a quarter period difference between them. So once you can find one, you should be able to find the other one. So your, your graph, this is your cosine graph. Your sine graph started here. So it's a quarter period difference. Okay? So... C. C is found by finding for cosine the maximum point. All right, so what is the maximum point? It's here. What is that value? How will we find it? Anthony, you go. Idea. Probably algebraically. Uh, it's at where about seven and a half ish, seven and a quarter? Question mark. All right. So that's when the tricky part comes in. So it's the distance to the maximum that we want, this line here, as C. Nine times out of ten, they'll actually tell you where it happens. I haven't got a clue where it happens because I didn't use that, which is a bit of a dumb thing to do. We can change it, though. Let's change it so we can actually do it right. So I'm going to make six this. And I'm going to make this point out here for me. So that means nothing else has changed, right? All those other things are right. That point there is six, the maximum. So now we know that the maximum is six. I'll change that over. Six. So then we can actually put it into the formula. I'm so glad you're here. This is I love this lesson. It's the worst lesson I actually teach. And I've told it so many different ways, and it's still the worst lesson I ever teach. So how do we guess the equation? We've got A, three. What graph did we use? We use the cosine. B, bracket, remember, first. Pi by 4. Bracket. C, we moved it this way, so it's minus 6. Bracket, bracket. Minus 2. Put it in your calculator. See if it looks like that-ish. 